let's uh, take a look at, uh, not made this video, made certainly more than a few videos about portrait lenses, but I've been bequeathed to make this video more than a few times recently. The absolute pinnacle of the pinnacle of portrait lenses. We're only dealing with the Nikon mounts here. Um, yeah, <laughs> between these, uh, how many have I got here? Yeah, between these six lenses, the totality of them is six thousand uh, dollars. A lot of money. Um, absolute pinnacle. Um, unmatched, unrivaled. Now let's take a look in no particular order. The 85 millimeter f 1.8 Genicor. Um, well, sharpness is not everything. This is also uh, not here, but uh, this is the sharpest of uh, the Nikkor 85 millimeters. It is even sharper than the 85 millimeter f 1.4 G Nikkor, and it is certainly sharper than the older D series. And I've had many of those, and still do own them. 85 millimeter f 1.4 and f 1.8 a D series autofocus Nikkor. So this is the sharpest of uh, the 85 millimeter Nikkors, both G series and D series, and also the bokeh is beautiful. The color saturation, the rendering is beautiful. It's a wonderful lens while it is mostly plastic. Eh, somewhat expensive, uh, relatively so. I mean, you're looking at $700, $750, depending on where you get it from, USA or gray market. Um, another lens, and I got a couple of these, are very expensive. How are you even buy them used from Japan at uh, moderately cheap prices? And oh my god, this lens is heavy and it will outlast you and your grandchildren as long as you don't drop it or something like that. And that is the 85mm Carl Zeiss Planar F 1.4. Heavy as a tank and it is beautiful. Now this is a manual focus lens, so this lens is exquisite, sublime, divine. It's perfection. It's, it's perfection. There's only one thing that actually bests this lens as so far as its creaminess and uh, its dreaminess. And that would be the absolute top of all of these lenses, the absolutely king of all uh, full-frame portrait lenses for an icon is this, not the 135, which is a close runner-up, is the uh, 105 F2 DC Nikkor. New, this lens is like $1,050. This is old-school D-series, all-metal, made in Japan, kick-ass, you know, slap your mama, you know, uh, silk, sex, and sugar. It's perfection. This is the best portrait lens out there. There is nothing that you can buy at any amount of money that is better than this. Yes, it's the F2 D series. Uh, well, there's only one series on the DC Nikkor. F2 DC Nikkor. A uh, good bit more expensive, but more reach. Perfect for headshots, but perfect in general for portraiture. The 135 F2, also the DC Nikkor. This is patented by Nikon, the DC or defocus control, as they ignorantly call it, which is really a very stupid name as far as what it does. Um, both of these lenses are uh, F2. Exquisite, sublime, perfection, absolute pinnacle. Both of these have uh, built-in lenses. Both of these are uh, uh, perfection, made in Japan, the absolute pinnacle of quality. Nothing matches them. Not cheap, $1,350 new. I don't know, usually you can get them used for like a $950, $980. Also not cheap. Oh my God, this lens will just... Oh my God, this lens is incredible. Love it, incredible. Um, let's take a look at a DX crop sensor lens. A lot of people have bought this lens. Uh, this is the older version. It actually has a rubber focusing ring. They're both the same. The new SL2 is a uh, all metal uh, focusing ring. This is the uh, Voigtlander 58 millimeter f1.4. Check out the Flickr page for it if you want to see how dreamy and beautiful it is. This is absolute pinnacle perfection. There is not one percent of difference in quality and uh, precision and exquisite excellence between this lens and the 85 millimeter f1.4 or basically any Zeiss lenses. Uh, Cosina Voigtlander and Zeiss, much of Zeiss lenses are made in Japan, not Germany, and they're made underneath the same roof as uh, Voigtlander's. This is absolute pinnacle perfection. It is also a manual focus lens, but it is CPU contact, which means you can use it in shutter priority and aperture priority, and your camera does, in fact, communicate with this lens to tell it uh, what the hell is sitting on uh, the front of uh, the camera mount. This lens is ungodly beautiful. This is actually the best value of uh, any Nikkor here, but this this is not. A, this is actually a full frame lens. I'm calling it a DX crop lens because uh, for the equivalent focal length, this is perfect as a portraiture lens on DX crop. So let me correct that when I said that. This is technically 
a, a full frame lens, but it is best idealized on a crop sensor or a camera, but it's perfectly fine on any full frame lens. This is a full frame lens. Something that most people don't consider as a portraiture lens, but tons and tons and tons and tons of photographers actually use this as a portrait lens, and it's just silk, sex, and sugar. See, when it comes to portraiture, unless you're taking pictures of someone that doesn't want their picture taken, your portrait, uh, your portraiture uh, subjects, you know, the chicks, the, the babies, well, babies move a little bit. You're not too worried about autofocus speed in portraiture. <laughs> so this is a manual focus lens. It doesn't matter if it's a manual focus version or uh, the newer, which are a lot more expensive. The uh, newer uh, autofocus lenses are this uh, AIS, which is a manual focus lens, a 300 millimeter f2.8. A big monster, a heavy monster, a very heavy monster actually. It will rip the mount right out of your camera. If you just like let go of this lens and hold your camera only, it will, it will just absolutely molest your camera. Your camera will uh, be, uh, it will be. Uh, it will be no bueno. <laughs> it won't be a good outcome. You have to know actually how to handle one of these lenses. They have a built-in uh, lens hood. And so that's it. The 300 millimeter f2.8. This is an AIS Nikkor. It's a manual focus lens. It's absolutely dreamy, silky, sexy perfection uh, for portraiture. You obviously have to back up, but what you can do with the lens compression and uh, taking this uh, uh, outdoors for like group shots or small group shots, but uh, backing up and uh, taking shots with this lens is it's unrivaled. It's, it's beautiful. It's a low element count prime lens. It's insanely heavy. So these are the absolute... Someone is going is to say now about this video, they're going to say, well, why didn't you include a so-and-so lens? Well, the reason I didn't include so-and-so lens is because it didn't make the, the grade for the top, top pinnacle. This is already $6,000 worth of lenses right here. Obviously, no one's going to buy all of them. Only a moron like me would have all of them and have tested all of them, these and the other ones. So someone's going to say, why didn't you include this lens? Why didn't you include that lens? Because it didn't make the cut. This is the top of the top of the top of the top, the best of the best, the top 1% of the top 1%, if you will. And so that is that. Okay? Glad I could help. And, uh, yeah, these lenses are not cheap. Isn't it kind of odd that the well, this lens is actually relatively very cheap. That's why it's an absolute pinnacle. There is no lens that's a better value than the Voigtlander 5814. But these lenses, other than that one, are obviously very expensive. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later.